<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we took your spot. What are, you, what are your albums doing? Yeah. What the fuck is this? We're about to start the show. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 20 of the Coffee Club podcast. It's uh, it's another big number. We I remember we celebrated episode 10. I don't know how we celebrated it. Actually, that was... A, that was we had Was that when we had beers with Lewis? Was that Lou and Ryan? I think it was. Was that episode 10? Yeah. So, we celebrated episode 10, 20, another kind yeah. of big milestone. Just ticking those weeks off, man. 20 is big. We yeah. Are. But so was like 20... I think 25 might be bigger, though. Like yeah. Quarter century. Quarter century. And that's almost half a year, because then, then you get like 26, really that's is. half a year. So, time is absolutely flying. Uh, you may notice that we unfortunately don't have the whore bag, Oliver Whore, on. But we have Carlos instead. How are <laughs> you doing, Carlos? We're really downgraded, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that, don't say that. Um, so, Ollie, so we're doing this a few days post Milrose dust is settled. Ollie yesterday is, was like feeling a bit unwell, and he's still not feeling amazing today. So, he's like... He's kind of like quarantining in his room, so unfortunately, can't get the uh, the want to make a mile champ on today. But I'm sure hard to come by now. It's yeah. Hot property. <laughs> we'll either have him back on next week to talk about it, or we'll talk about it with him tomorrow and add it on to the show if if he can. But um, from what just, we know, he doesn't have COVID. He based has based on the three a, tests he's taken. Yeah, he yeah we we did like three tests on him and he was. It would like, be impressive if he had COVID and he we had these couple tests. Of, we had a couple of tests that Jordan brought from Germany, and n- none of the instructions were in English, so we had to get Carlos to read the Spanish instructions. <laughs> <laughs> to figure out so honestly, to like <laughs> that was actually quite easy. I mean, it's super simple. Like, yeah, I mean, mostly they are simple, but like I don't know if you get because you can get a inconclusive result if you maybe if you fuck it up. Yeah. So it'd be like shitty to not read the the Spanish instructions. And yeah, like it was. I mean, it was pretty it self-explanatory, but yeah. yeah. But that was funny. Yeah. yeah. So all I guess other viruses, sicknesses do exist apart from COVID, and Ollie potentially has one of those. Yeah. But probably not COVID. So that's I guess a plus. Yeah. So or is it? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> like it would be better just to get tick that COVID. box. It I, would actually be okay for him to get it this week because he's racing next week. So. Um, he could get it and then recover and then be good to race. But yeah, whatever. Enough about that. We're gonna keep the show rolling. And obviously, we have a lot to talk about today. Coming off a very successful trip to New York for the OAC squad, we have George Beamish right here, winner of the 3K. Ollie won the mile. Alicia won the 3K. Sage ran a PB in the mile. She did pretty well. She she got after it. It was like pretty she exciting really to see. So you know, overall, like. Pretty amazing trip for the squad, huh? It was, yeah. I mean, I think it was kind of... We knew there was something, like... There was, like, potential for a pretty special weekend. Um, Just everyone being fit and and Mirrors' big weekend and having a huge on presence with um, some of the guys from Portland and then, what, eight or ten of the crew from Zurich... um, just pretty special having that that crew there so yeah good to get it done though yeah it was it was pretty dramatic how things ended up playing out uh for a bit of behind the scenes the lightning team which is the name for on's innovation team shout out to them they flew in here to florida like five days before it and did spike testing and you may have noticed if you watched that most of our people were wearing new on spikes so they got to test them in the few days leading up and clearly they are good enough that people go out and race in them so especially for the team it was really exciting to see that happen see it come to fruition right in front of their eyes i I actually messaged jordan donnelly who heads that team after just like congratulations and he said it was like the most like stress relieving like amazing thing just he said he had poured so much like sleepless nights into developing the spikes and stuff and then to be able to see them like on some athletes feet winning races he said it was just like the best thing ever so pretty freaking awesome for the people to get to experience that actually be there because you can see how with some brands there's a bit of a disconnect between shoe designers and all that and the athletes but these designers were right there seeing it all unfold right in front of their eyes so pretty awesome it is sweet for them and just cool for us to see where it came from like a year ago 
having like a, a really early spike and then having them come at the end of last summer in September with like handmade versions of the spikes and like they had a clear idea but it was like shit how, how do you turn this into like an actual working spike and yeah. then within what is it now four or five months honestly like, though I think what was most impressive was um, based on the results like how everybody favored a different kind of spike like just different I don't know different feel and then for them to come together and yeah basically take all of that and put it into one and yeah like i said it just worked well all across the board so yeah, that was really cool it's to see. not easy we've we've gotten the real behind the scenes look on how they develop these spikes and it's a lot more i will say it's yeah. a lot more art than science than i expected in terms of the way the technology is at the moment you're combining these special foams i don't even know what they're made of but with then like plates and you're trying to come up with the perfect formula, like the perfect marriage between these soft foams and these hard plates to be as efficient as possible in terms of the force you put in the ground, getting it back. And that's really difficult to do. Like, <laughs> yeah. Especially when you take into account that all runners are different. No, yeah. it's like It's like there's so much that goes into it. And the final product looks so simple, but then seeing what actually went into it is, is crazy. And no. like you guys do all this testing and it's like, man. I thought it was just hilarious because, like, even someone like Sage and myself, uh, we're both we both run the 800, 1500, and once I was testing out the spikes, I was like, "Oh, this is the one! This is the one!" And I like I went up to Sage, I'm like, "Oh, what'd you think of this one?" She's like, "Well, actually, I like this one better." Yeah. And it was just sort of like, "Whoa!" Yeah, you know? I, I honestly thought that there would be some machine or technology to get like hard numbers in terms of how well like a material should be able to get. The, like that you can do in a lab but yeah a lot of it does come down to just making the product and then testing it and getting feedback and the other aspect of it which i don't think any of us were aware of is how expensive that process is because you have to get these shoes factory made and the the to get a shoe factory made to get a new shoe factory made is like 40 grand or something i think it's like 40 grand per size yeah like open a size yeah so it's like yeah, whatever that even means they always like yeah it's a ridiculous process yeah. and it is cool to get the insights on it and like see it happen so yeah wearing the new shoes very cool for the team um but yeah i guess we may as well just get into a deep dive of milrose and we we did mention this last week but to re restate it Milrose is, is a big deal. It's it's such a big meat. Probably, I think Joe Klecker was saying it's the big, most watched indoor meat. I don't know if he said in the world or in America. I think it is in the world. But it's wow. like, it's a massive meat. So it was like, I don't know. It, I don't want to take it for granted, like the achievements that, you know, like you, George, and everyone else like was able to accomplish there. Because it, it's, it's crazy what you guys did. But let's dive into it. Um, days leading up, arriving in New York. It, hotel it's always like the same hotel and you get to hang out with everyone was it was it pretty cool yeah it actually was like you realize when everyone stays in the same hotel like you you couldn't walk like through the lobby without just getting stuck there for like half an hour talking to someone like either but on the way to coffee or back from coffee like trying to shake out everything is it's just like having a million conversations with like every runner i guess you haven't seen since the last season or something and we Which all, is actually a pretty cool thing in the running. It really world. is. That's why we can't hate each other, man. Because you're just gonna <laughs> you're just gonna end up staying yeah. with them. Like heck, you might even be rooming with them, and then you're just like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're, we're like actually very similar, and everyone lives like very similar schedules as well. So you go to the you go to the local good coffee shop, and you'll run into a runner there. It's it's well, an that's interesting. What happened? Wait, did so I, I, I didn't, didn't? I ended up with a roommate, not knowingly, because I was hearing that like with COVID stuff, I didn't know if we were, like people were doing roommates. And, like, Sage was saying that for her Dr. Sanders meet this weekend, like, she wasn't allowed to have a roommate or something. And, I mean, but I, I mean, I had a room with, when I had a room with two beards, I was like, yeah, there's, like, I've had a roommate at Moore's before. Like, it's probably a chance that someone comes in at some point mm -hmm. this evening. <laughs> but, like, didn't think about it. Like, went along with my evening, went out to dinner and stuff. Like, came back. I was like, yeah, well, I guess no one's coming. Mm -hmm. Um... And then, like, I will go to bed, mouth tape on. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Sleeping naked. Because that's how you do it. Of course. And then I get, like, some banging on the door. It's, like, 11.30. Oh, no. Like, oh. And I, like, I put the thing over the door for some reason. 
I don't know. I mean, that's just habit. Like that little locky thing. Oh, yeah. So like, like proper lock so they couldn't get in yeah, with, so with the key card. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I was damn. like, shit. You really All locked right. them out. I've probably got a roommate. <laughs> Do I put clothes on? <laughs> Do I just like open the door? Yeah. But I like, I took my <laughs> mouth tape off because I didn't want to like freak out who this person was. And then so I put some like, put some boxes on and opened the door and it was Charlie Hunter. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> that was pretty funny. Damn, that's actually pretty good. Our, our Australian yeah. friend, member of the... Member of the, the infamous... The UAC. <laughs> United Track Club. United Union uh, Athletics Club. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Especially... So that was pretty funny. <laughs> it's, anno- it's so annoying when your roommate comes in after you've gone to bed as well. That just sucks. Yeah, I slept like shit that night. Yeah. I don't know if like I was thinking about like the interruption or... But... Charlie's a good dude, so it was a fun. Weekend. I mean, that's that's a got prime a, got example, to chat to him a lot. right there, where it's like we have made fun of the UAC in the last two or three, actually, like the last four or five episodes, yeah, and now the first meet you go to, <laughs> you're yeah. you're literally rooming with Charlie. <laughs> yeah, but, that was pretty funny. Damn. So what did he say? Do you guys talk about the name then? We actually didn't, but he apparently he talked about it with Ollie. Oh. I don't know how. We, I was like gonna bring it up, but I was try. I mean, I just went to sleep. Yeah. Like we chatted for like five minutes, and I was like, dude. It, I need to get to sleep. He was on Pacific time, so it was only like 8 p.m. Oh, yeah. So he didn't go to sleep till like 2.30 or something. That makes sense why he would have got in so late then yeah. as well. Yeah. But I was like trying to get to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he and Ollie were just joking about the next day. I don't, he, I don't think he cared. Yeah, well, it's a similar vein to Craig Angles, who last week, it was a bit of a news story for a couple of days. This Let's Run article came out, which was an interview with him, I think Donovan as well. And it was about... It was about just their team in general and going back to racing, but they did ask questions about the name. It's funny. I feel like the name thing has gotten way more press now than it should have. (laughs) But that's the nature of our sport, you know. There's often not much going on, so people will cling on to big storylines. But Craig Engels had some amazing quotes in there, which were kind of ridiculous. I don't want to rag on Craig. Great guy. But he said that he had never heard of the On (laughs) Athletics Club, and it's just like, well, how is that possible? Like, come on, we're, we're, we exist in the same universe, do we not? I was, don't know how you would come up with the name UAC and OAC doesn't even come to your mind. Not that we assume Craig had anything to do with the coming up of the name. Yeah, it, it's true, but... But it's a classic uh, Craig thing to say. Yeah, I mean, and then the reality is that article was slightly hostile, like not too bad, but then apparently he was just like, yeah, sorry about that. I was kind of just like talking shit. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, we ran into him in the lobby like the first day and he was just joking about it and being like, yeah, that, that came off like way worse yeah. than I meant it to. And, and yeah. yeah. So again, that's like kind of the nature of our sport, man. Like a real beef is so hard to come by. It really is. Yeah. But yeah, everybody's just bros. I don't know. Everyone's homies out here. Yeah. But so first night, Charlie Hunter, roommate, and you guys got there a couple of days before. So what'd you get up to Friday, like the day before the meet? Day before the meet. Was that when it snowed or did it only snow the day off? I think the blizzard well, think was day was off. Just, yeah. Um, what did we do? Oh, we had we had uh, Ollie's, Ollie's breakfast to go to. His whoop, his whoop breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you guys all got invited to that. Well, it was like athlete. Whoop was like hosting the breakfast with a couple of people speaking. And like one of the people speaking and then they were just providing breakfast for any athlete that wanted to here at the hotel it's like a buff it was actually super nice that was why it I, was. Just, I went good yeah. food it was pretty good food yeah, yeah. Nice. and we had heard that drew hunter and sam parsons were talking at that because yeah, of their were. affiliation with whoop and that's a pretty Ollie tall task. And spoke for like Wait, a, yeah really sam and drew and josette were up there and then the girl the lady was like talking about ollie wearing it in the race and she was like yeah, well, Ollie, do you want to, like, come up here and, like, say a few words about how it's been going, like, wearing it the last couple of weeks? And he said, hell weeks? yeah. <laughs> I've, been wearing, yeah. I've been wearing this thing for five days. I, I got this. Yeah, I kind of remember what he said. Something about how he realized how bad his recovery has been or something. That's pretty funny, something actually. Classic Ollie. Yeah. Was that, did Drew and Sam do a good job? They actually did. I actually, I quite liked their take on it. I think they've been wearing it for, like, years. They have, yeah, they've like, been sponsored for Sam a couple years. I think Sam's been wearing it for, like, three years. And wow. He actually had, like, a a good insight on how his kind of journey with like the his mental the mental health side of whoop and how he found like his meditation practices and mindfulness like ref- affected his recovery scores 
It was actually reflected in the Which, scores. Wow. According to Sam. Wow. That's was. impressive. So that was actually super interesting. But and now he was saying like that he actually he doesn't like need those scores as much because he he's like over the last couple of years like knows what it takes to have a five percent better score or whatever. That actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, that, I I honestly. I'm a little bit skeptical when it comes to stuff like that. So the fact that he was able to like see that stuff reflected in numbers is pretty cool. You know? I feel That's like a bunch of those numbers though are like things you don't really want to see, especially like, <laughs> I mean, me personally, like I just don't yeah. want to see how bad I slept <laughs> last night. Like I'll be having bomb dream, whatever, nap, whatever. <laughs> and then I wake up and I'm like, Oh, I actually slept terrible. I'm like, what? Yeah. That's, that is like a great issue with it as well. Like I, I in particular am very sensitive to that stuff i i will know if i got a bad sleep and everyone <laughs> around me will probably also know if i got a bad sleep so it's like for me i don't know how much of a difference that thing will make but i mean it is good to see because if you think about from that from sam's perspective that's definitely gonna make him continue and be even more into meditating if he's like oh wow i'm getting like these real like benefits from it that you can see in numbers in the data and everyone loves data kind of so i mean you have to right if you're a yeah. runner yeah, yeah yeah so like that that's yeah. cool yeah. but so pretty standard day before. That was breakfast, yeah. Breakfast. And then, um, we went on a shakeout and all the on people like came on the run with us in Central yeah. Park. That was pretty fun. There was like 20 of us like jogging through Central Park as you do. Um, yeah, Central Park is pretty cool. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Wait, was that when it was snowed in? No, it only snowed on Saturday. Okay. So fri- Wait, yeah. I guess like shakeout for the pre-meet. So not like we just ran three miles or something. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, not shakeout, shakeout. Yeah, I was, I saw, I woke up Saturday and I saw that there were like blizzard warnings. I don't know if it was mostly Boston, but definitely like hitting New York as well. I was like, shit, like that could be kind of sketchy. Did it have a big impact on you guys? Did you guys warm up outside and all that? Oh, yeah, it was, it was whack. It was whack. Wait, one more thing on Friday quickly, Mm -hmm. just to solidify uh, pre-race curries. A two for two on pre-race curries. I think it's locked in. Back to, back to Indian food. Yeah. Worked like a treat in Boston. Found another place in New York. What did you end up getting, though? Uh, lamb curry. Lamb, well, actually, Ollie got the lamb buna, and I got lamb Rogan Josh, I think, and a Yum. mango lassi. Yum. Delicious. Yum. None. Wait, didn't you guys, ha- we had that in Nashville, didn't we? When Ollie ran, like, 333. I don't know. I didn't, neither, neither or was, did he was, run 333, 334? I don't know, man. That's a uh, that was the first time I've yeah, ever had Indian food. Yeah, I remember that because that's the first time I've ever had you Indian had food. You had the night before then, too? I think so, yeah. Wow. Well, uh, it's been mean, a tradition for even longer. I don't even know. I don't know if it was the night. I don't I just. I don't remember if it was the night before or like two nights before, but I know I had it, and I hmm. remember because that was the first time. I was like, damn, this is bomb. Yeah. So, anyone out there listening, if you're looking for a quick, easy way to improve your race, Indian food the night before. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Coffee club, tick of approval. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think just OAC tick of approval. OAC now. tick of approval. The girls, yeah. the girls enjoyed it. Hell yeah! Oh wow, yeah. Ran very well. You do kind of have to be in the right city for it, though. I I would imagine, like Nashville Probably is actually true. impressive, but New York and Boston, those are the types of places where you're like, I'm gonna get some real good Indian food here. So yeah. that's an exciting trip. Where yeah. where are you thinking that we can't? get really good indian food what city are we in <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to think of where i've raised probably birmingham alabama <laughs> i don't know maybe uh like north dakota or something yeah i probably wouldn't recommend it there hopefully yeah. we we don't have a race in north dakota no offense to anyone from north dakota yeah actually that'd be a, probably a nice place it to probably race. honestly i think the dakotas get like shit on for for no reason because no one's been there yeah there's probably like some sweet nature and scenery I, there. there there must be honestly because there's not much <laughs> else going on there yeah i don't know what is in the dakotas because i mean i'm just saying like if you live anywhere in the area like wouldn't you want to live in like minnesota if it's gonna be cold live in minnesota wisconsin yeah go to the big cities yeah but i don't know man some people like that well, at least we'll find life. out if we go to shit me and ollie might have to find some indian food in serbia Ooh. good luck <laughs> might be struggling yeah that's kind of sketchy but I don't know. This see, this that's Southern the thing. California? Maybe if how you're about? in a big city in Serbia, there's like a big Indian yeah. community. I don't know. You never know. Well, how cl- I mean, to be fair, Serbia is a lot closer to India than <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> it's a good point. Actually. Also, that's a there good you point. go. I don't know much about Serbia, but I'm gonna trust you on that one. <laughs> I don't know much about geography either, so who knows? <laughs> but so Indian the night before, and then yeah, going back to the blizzard. Because for anyone who doesn't know. On a beautiful, nice day, 
the Armory is it is madness in there. It's classic New York. It's uptown. Is it uptown? Yeah, New York. It's like the last ten or fifteen blocks of Manhattan. Yeah, it is up there. <laughs> and the track itself is on I think the fourth floor of a building, and the stands yeah. are on the fifth floor. And there's just no space. There's just oh, chaos there's, there, there's yeah. chaos. There's so many people there, and there's all the sprinters doing their drills up and down this one hallway where this track surface the the level <laughs> below like to warm up. It's 90 degrees. It's in hot. This hallway. Just madness. And so and when you get there, there's like a thousand high schoolers like either getting ready to race or just finished racing because yeah. they like combine the high school meet with like the pro meet follows like right after. Yeah. Which is cool for the vibes. Very cool for the vibes. A bunch of high school. High Honestly, though, like, going to the bathroom to there is a little sketch. You Sketchy come out of there and you might get trucked by yeah. a sprinter. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they do strides the right stri- outside the door. Yeah. Like stick your so head sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> so sketchy, that place. And then normally you would go out for a jog. Uh, Even on a good day, around the block. Up sucks. Yeah, it does suck because you're in New York and you're like running around like these like busy roads and stuff. But so in the blizzard, you guys couldn't run outside. Or could you? Honestly, the sidewalks were like a death sentence. Yeah. It was like, I don't know how, there were a few inches of snow, but by that point, like, it's kind of been half cleared and like you've had a few thousand cars drive through it so it's now just turned into that like brown slush yeah that's like the a worst. few inches of slush all over the road and the freaking footpaths mm-hmm. so but there was like big talk of like finding a parking garage like yeah before people leaving like i think smith was on it and maybe haas like people were trying to find somewhere to jog uh-huh and successful mission to find parking garage like a few blocks down really damn yeah wow. which that's nice is actually good to know for future reference but we, so we ran out and then just ran down the middle of the road in i mean i thought i was gonna like eat shit and tear my acl yeah, on, the, on, so the, on the way to the parking garage yeah um but we literally got there and just ran laps of the parking garage for 20 minutes it's so funny <laughs> it's like, pretty funny it's we, all just part of the new york experience yeah. man who'd you warm up with um most mostly Luis and and connor mance and, and no and mason Fulwick and Beetle skim and most of the, the whole school, pretty much the whole race, yeah, yeah. the entire field. You <laughs> know? Paul and Cooper were kind of doing their own like they do some pretty random shit warming up. Oh yeah, on that on that Ben Thompson, yeah, grind. Seems very strict. I yeah, don't, like, very specific. Very I bet specific they, set of I bet they that do. No one else is doing. They they must do pickups in their warm Wait, up. Wait, who's Ben Thompson? Ben Thomas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I think oh. I, I might have that wrong, but I think that's what Ollie called him last <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. So that's that's our, that's our, our name for him. But there actually are other athletes as well that do but I swear pickups they started in the warm-up. With, I mean, I, mean I, I was doing some pickups in the warm-up. It is pretty common. Like, oh, kinda, you do that? Well, we used to do it in a year, and Luis oh, okay. was doing them. Or well, I at least like a progression warm-up. Yeah. I would like to do that. I just don't really know how to. Maybe I'll start doing it next time we race together. I'll just copy what you do. And it, Well, <laughs> part of the reason it was like, minus freaking 10 degrees yeah so like it was like 20 degrees for americans uh-huh. and so it was like it was kind of hard to get your heart rate up That's so you fair. felt like you had to kind of get some pickups to actually get anywhere yeah um that's like that this is the type of stuff that you don't think about in this sport that as a runner like racing under these conditions you just have to be able to like take the hits you know like not knowing where you're going to warm up and then just running to some random garage. Like that's the type of stuff that's all, it's all part of that race day, like craziness, excitement and nerves. And it's such ca- a comparison too to going to like California in April. So different. Like going to Stanford yeah. in April when it's like beautiful and there's like some manicured grass fields to warm up on and like everything's it's, it's the complete it's super opposite. chill. Did you and guys, like, uh, I was going to ask, did you guys think at any point it was going to get canceled? Like the meet? <laughs> I, was I, I, like, yeah they were saying that on, our, on the way to the shakeout in the morning or something like walk past matt son and fell in the in the lobby and he goes check your emails or something that's scary he's like oh wow he's like nothing's canceled yet but but check your emails yeah. yes <laughs> and it yeah. was it was something to do with like the shuttle service or something all right we're back and we just had a little sub out there <laughs> alicia munson for carlos one for one trade yeah. transfer <laughs> the transfer trade portal alert, trade alert. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, lucky for us, she brought over a bag of beans, yeah. which is actually from Sage Herder's parents, who we will have on the podcast either this episode <laughs> or the next one. Not her parents. Not Sage. her parents. <laughs> uh, I would get her parents on if we could, True. but it will be Sage. So thank you very much to her parents for contributing this coffee to us. Because believe it or not, even though we just literally made our own coffee beans, we are about to face a coffee bean shortage because <laughs> oh, no. at this beautiful community that we're in here in Florida... 
there's no USPS postage. Uh-huh. So a bunch of people, including our own beans, have been tried to be sent to us and then they've been denied. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first question Merba asked me in my interview. <laughs> yeah. So was is that like a usual thing for USPS to not deliver to certain areas? or what? My, my theory is that USPS has this place registered as no one lives here. Yeah. So when it gets uh-huh. to the local one, they just look at that and it's just like no Go one lives there. Back. Send it back. Hmm. That's my theory. So Maybe, Kyle, if you send those beans again, send them the fast U- way. UPS, FedEx? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we get those beans. Hopefully we do. But back to Milrose, Alicia. Yeah. When, when you came in, we were, t- we were covering the long the form. Yeah, you are covering the warm-up yeah. situation. Yeah, we got to the warm-up. Did yeah. you go to the parking garage? Yeah, I did. I Right when I walked out the sketch. doors, Charlie Hunter was like also heading over there, so we kind of made our way down the two blocks together it was like because you had to go like down a hill in order to get to the parking garage we ran on the sidewalk just Mm. like really shuffled yeah Yeah, so (laughs) it's just so crazy (laughs) like new york is just also new york in the winter has all the trash on the sidewalk and stuff so when it snows everything is just the biggest like shit show there but so still on george's journey i guess you warmed up i guess actually alicia you were the first race yeah yeah. So why don't we cover Started Alicia first? Uh, yeah, warmed up. Kind of same story as George. Like he, like, it's so hard to warm up when it's really cold outside that I just wasn't even really like caring about my warm up. Yeah. Usually before workouts, we're running like we run three miles and stuff like that. But it's just like I ran for like probably eighteen minutes. I probably ran like little over two miles yeah <laughs> like, and then you just do like a bunch of strides because there's just a downstairs um like 50 meter stride area in the armory and that's kind of it so everyone's just kind of like going in lines together just like striding down the little yeah runway. lucky for both of you you guys have both raced there before so you know you yeah. like i i guess you know what to expect i can imagine i can remember the first time i raced there i was like holy shit like, yeah this is, this is crazy but yeah like you're used to it huh yeah i actually remember the first time i raced there i thought the race was like five minutes later than it actually oh, was no. <laughs> <laughs> I was in college and i look and see like the pro athletes all headed up the stairs like to the area and i was like freaking out like wait what i should probably be there <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my race they're so, going to the start line yeah but so. <laughs> so you were in the women's 3k and round two of the yeah. the head-to-head Wayne Kaladi Alicia yeah, same pro month. <laughs> yeah actually very it's, different event <laughs> yeah yeah wait 10K on the grass in California or 3k on the track and that was like what two three weeks ago three weeks three weeks yeah that's it yeah three weeks that was yeah very recent very recent and it's funny because you have actually won the exact race before right You've won the 3K Milrose yeah, before. Yeah, that was my second Milrose win. So, so that was it's good. kind of funny that you had you'd in won in very different like fashions, though. Yeah. How did uh, how was, was the it race? Was the last time it was held? Was it 2020 or did you win in 2019? No, I won in 2019. That's right. And then I got like sixth or something in 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what was like your thoughts going into the race in terms of? Obviously, you probably thought it was going to come down to a head-to-head with Wayne Kaladi, and then. Obviously, that was the pacemaker, and you just slotted. You you had from watching it from my experience, like my perspective, you had no fear. Like you just you just went into it and you just raced. Was yeah. that how you thought it was going to play out? Yeah, I mean, we had been starting to do like speed workouts between Cross and Milrose, so that was kind of the first time we really worked on really shorter distance speed stuff on the track and. I was, like, a little bit nervous. Dathan had told me that we were going to do, like, 835 pace. And then we get there, and the sheet with all the pacers says 68s, which is 830 pace. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of freaked out for a little bit. And uh, But Dathan was like, you can run 830. Don't worry about it. Like, 100%. So, yeah, I kind of, to actually go out and do it gives me more confidence that Dathan knows what he's talking about. <laughs> So he, he was very confident. Like when you went when you went around before like before the race, hearing him speak, he's like, Yeah, she's gonna go run eight thirty. <laughs> yeah. he, he was very confident in that. Yeah. But were you did you mind that Wayne Kaladi was just gonna sit on you the whole race? No, because I mean like at the end of the day it's it's better to have someone with you even if they're behind you than to be alone. Like it just 
even if like she she apologized afterwards for like clipping my heel a little bit i was like i don't care like it told me that you were there which is good yeah it feels like an actual race still exactly yeah because that that's kind of what you see the difference between like men's and women's races i i I would say where it's like you guys were the the class of the field Mm -hmm. and uh you guys just went out and, and ran like that whereas you don't really see that in a men's race it was really different and i have to say i was obviously i I had a lot of faith in you but when she was just sitting on you the whole time that definitely made me a bit nervous yeah it does make you a little nervous because most a lot of the time like if whoever's you know the pacer of the group like ends up blowing up a little bit in the last 400 so i kind of tried to just out kick (laughs) from the front which you did yeah congratulations yeah thank you (laughs) got her done yeah was it was it tough like did it feel bad um it felt pretty just like i mean it was it was hard for sure but i feel like if we were to have a group of women like who are super fit right now and get on a train i think there could be another fast race like that to be honest like it it just felt like i don't know clockwork like we just do so many workouts of hard reps that it just kind of felt normal yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah that's fair. i mean the kick is the hardest part really that's true that's true damn so yeah that was cool to see and then george was like the next race a bit later you come back into the building where were you when alicia's race was happening were you able to watch it at all i actually did i was like putting on my spikes upstairs yeah. in the little like uh, hip number area I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And then, well, I guess I just walked in and I looked up. I was like, oh, shit, Alicia's running. <laughs> by, the, by that time, it was only her and Wayne. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's under control. And then <laughs> I looked up again. It was only Alicia. I was like, oh, hell yeah. It's pretty standard. It's, fun. <laughs> it's funny. because I guess I, I'll go back to putting my spikes on. <laughs> I have had that exact experience because when Alicia did win it last time as well, I was racing the men's 3K. So I was, <laughs> I was the next race and I saw her win. And then I'm like, oh, shit, now I got to go do it. <laughs> yeah. And then Grant beat me. But it was a great race still. Yeah, yeah. But that happened so many times that season where Alicia would be before me and do something crazy. And then you're like, all right. Yeah, we'd always be doing like the same races. Yeah, so like, all right, like, time to go. She set the bar pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess for, for you guys, you had different coaches. So not quite the same, but... I feel like any time, like, we'd always talk about it um, in college, like, someone just, like, setting the precedent early in the day. Like, yeah. if you know you're doing, you know, similar training and you have the same coach and, um, you know, everyone, then kind of seems like everyone's going to be ready. 100%. If, if someone has a, starts out the day well like that. Yeah, 100%. And then, as we foretold last week, the men's 3K... We knew it was going to be stacked in terms yeah. of just a lot of depth, a lot of talent, a lot of heavy hitters. And I was really impressed with, like, your positioning, like, off the, off the line pretty much. Like, you, you got out there and you were in, like, a nice spot right behind Mr. John Gay. Yeah. I actually, it was way more aggressive than normal, but not in the first, his, like, 100 meter splits in the results. And after 100 meters, I was in, like, 12th. Oh, really? was like, <laughs> but after 200 meters i was in like fourth so it was like the second half of that first lap so it wasn't really off the line but then i just kind of stayed on i mean i had to get around a few people so just stayed on the gas for a little longer yeah to get out of the way of people dude that's kind of the life hack man like you don't go out as you don't have to go out as hot off the line but if you keep that initial really kick don't. just going for a bit longer you get around everyone that's like what watching like every time stewie ran last summer he's in last place after 20 meters 100 percent. but after 120 meters he's just gone around the whole field yeah it definitely works like you don't have to stress too much you about really that don't. initial off the line but coming like, from still, distance still runners, up leading though. every race from the front even though he's in last place <laughs> off the line yeah it, it gives you hope you don't have to have like that fast twitch whatever to to be where you want to be in the race but so you I guys maybe ollie just false starts every time yeah he's always he's, he's the always line. there <laughs> so hard yeah he puts a lot of power into those first few steps maybe he's just he's check his, probably check his reaction time on that just yeah see if that's legal. <laughs> he's actually <laughs> just false start <laughs> <laughs> that'd be very impressive how consistently he can do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so you guys are running what 61s I think the first K we stayed on 61s. Yeah. And then the second K was probably more like 62s. That that pace is a tough area because depending... It is, especially this time of year. De- yeah, depending how you're feeling, you have good days, you have bad days, but often that pace feels very uncomfortable to me. Yeah. I mean, we either do stuff like short stuff below that pace or long stuff like above that pace. We never actually run anything at 
61, 62. Yeah. Was so it was a pretty far in pace? Bit of a shock to the system. Um, I mean, 739 is still really fast. It didn't fast, feel super so. comfortable. It is fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were on like 745 pace. Okay. Yeah. Like one lap. But yeah, I mean, I, I wish that pace felt a little easier. And, it, and hopefully it will at some point. Yeah. Um, so at 61s, I like, feel super comfortable. Yeah, because um, you were you were on that pace through a K, and then the second K started to slow down a bit. But also personally, like, you, I don't know. I So I do this exact same thing. So I feel like we can, like, relate in this, where, like, you give the person in front of you, like, a step or two steps, whereas, like, other people don't do that. If you Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, yeah I, I, I prefer being, like, an extra half step back from someone. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all. But then people start coming in front of you, Definitely. and then you get pushed back because that's what happened to you. Like I don't know exactly what point, but around two k. I think between right at like a, a mile to like two k, I think. Yeah, and then it was like watching it. I don't. Were you watching it? Did you get to watch? So race? I was actually in drug testing, oh, so you, you and I like. <laughs> As I like accosted Donovan Brazier and like <laughs> I didn't have my phone with me so I made him look it up yeah I asked him who won and he's like well not Cooper T or Cole Hawker and I was like George yeah. won I just know yeah I missed someone you don't actually have to go to drug testing I know but it, I I you know made <laughs> you a mistake get it done. I made a mistake <laughs> I did want to get it done yeah so watching <laughs> it like in the last K it's like all these amazing runners keep coming around and yeah as we said loaded field so george gets pushed you get pushed back to like what maybe like six 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 or seven yeah and then it's the like, last, like k probably and then like that's that's a bunch of bodies in front of you so you have you're giving the guys in front of you five to ten meters like without and there's not much you can really do about it and these are some really fast closes like finishes in front of you so it's like that's when at least watching i'm like shit like he's I know he's got a fast kick, but so do these guys, and he's going to have to make up that distance in the last, in the last couple laps. But then with 400 to go, you started moving around people. Yeah. And w- what was that like I'm for you? Right at five to 400, I realized I needed to like probably move up a little bit. Yeah, and then you put this. Well, and you you realize pretty quickly on into a track that three laps to go is actually not very far. They start at that point in the race when you're so like in the zone and you're going quick the laps are just like that like they just like they go by so quick yeah and definitely i was like a little out of it for like probably six laps to go and then i heard kind of the lap counter say three to go and i was like shit that's like that's pretty <laughs> Less close than a i better, I better start yeah. kicking and that was when i was like damn all right i'm actually like not as tired as i thought <laughs> i'm gonna do something that's how it is i feel me. like that's your every race though yeah <laughs> i always like think it's getting hard and then i'm like fuck this isn't this isn't actually as hard as I thought. Actually, I can I can sprint a lot faster than I'm running <laughs> yeah. right now. I swear, I have like the exact same thing. So, in that second last lap, you're passing a bunch of people. But then I think I got two people on the second last lap. Maybe Drew and whoever was running with Drew. John Gay was probably still in front of you at that yeah, point. Yeah, maybe it was. Maybe like Drew and John Gay. Yeah. On that second last lap. And then with a lap to go, Louis G was leading, right? Yeah, he was. And he had Cooper and Cole on him, and which is the same thing. Louis took the, like. I think he likes to go from quite far out, especially he had just been kind of lost that last 200 to Cooper in double A's. Yeah. Yeah. He probably had that in the back of his mind, like trying to get a jump on him. Yeah. And then Cooper and Cole go around Louis, and it kind of looks like they're racing for the win. And then freaking George yeah. Beamish doing George <laughs> Beamish stuff. Just, Comes through. It's just like a train inside. closing <laughs> in on them. And then, yeah, dude, what would you have done if they didn't give you dude, the inside lane? I don't know. I was like so set on sticking to the inside, like even right off the bend. I just like, I had the, I had a feeling that like, that it was gonna open up. Yeah, and you were one hundred percent right, and you came through right at the line. And your, what was your last one hundred? Because they had they had the split. It was ridiculous. Twelve, <laughs> 12 three, yeah. I think. Twelve three for the Jeez. last one hundred of a race. That's just like that's, that's mental, crazy. man. That is that is so quick. Uh, did like you? Four, uh, forty. I guess forty nine second four hundred pace. It's I've definitely quick. never run a 49. <laughs> I, don't know, I can't imagine actually doing that. At what point in that last lap did I don't know if this thought would even go through your mind at that point because you're just sprinting, but did you think you were going to win at some point? I honestly, I, I don't think I was even thinking about it. Yeah, like you're so in the moment there. You yeah. don't really think about that stuff. You just think about sprinting all out, huh? Right with like 20 meters to go, I was like, oh shit, like I'm actually catching these okay. guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty sweet. Yeah. And I mean, the last 150 is like the only part of the race I like. I just want to really? like get. Oh, it's just so fun. Yeah, that's true. 
Like I'm not interested. Especially when you can run that quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I just don't think I'm as interested in running fast as some people are. Like I respect people that want to run really fast times and yeah. like that's what they're in the sport for. But I feel like I'm less interested in, in finding out, you know, people like, ah, oh, I just want to know like how far I can push myself and see how good I can be. Yeah. Which, I mean, I respect of course, but I'm, I just don't think I'm as interested in that. You just want to race. George just likes the yeah. kick to the win. Yeah. Which is, I like, think I just, you said that in your quote after the race. Something about just how much you love racing. Like, just the last, like, <laughs> bit is so much more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I totally get that, though. I mean, that's like, it's almost like when you race, say if you're racing a 5K, it's like 4.6K of of yeah. pre-show, and then the last lap is yeah. the... That's the main event right there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the last, like, 800 is usually just, like, any race where it gets hard. Yeah. I guess last 800, speaking from a distance runner, probably not the same for people who are in an 800. So it's just, like, it's entertaining to be a part of, and I feel like I want it to be entertaining for people watching as well. You want to put on and a show, and that's <laughs> that's certainly what you did. You you won that race, and then your victory lap, <laughs> which we've come to find was, what, 38 seconds? Yeah. Victory right. lap, lane seven. I don't know how many lanes are on that track. Probably six. <laughs> six lanes. And so at 8.19, two mile, unofficially. <laughs> but your victory lap was absolutely electric. You, How many hands do you reckon you, Dude, you, know. you gave high fives to? Bunch it of was, COVID, probably. Yeah, probably. Probably. COVID. Should have watched the, those after. The best one, if you were watching, was Mike Smith getting up. Because yeah. the bends, the banks are super high, and he was on the ground floor, so like a good couple of meters down, and he jumped up that was to try to grab the high I like, five from George. I like saw him out of the corner of my eye, and like ran over to him. Yeah, it was fun. But and I was like, I was like going too quick at that point. I couldn't slow you down. Were you were moving, man. Like I was, and also to be to be honest, like you did not look tired at all on that victory lap. I was like, Did this guy like even just race? Like he, he looks <laughs> way too good. He looks That's way what I too think good. Sometimes I'm like, like it's hard with a few laps to go, and then I'm like, I finish. I'm like, oh just keep going but 100 percent. i think it's just adrenaline at that yeah, point though definitely makes a big difference by and the end of that lap, i was like fuck I, like that was probably the hottest lap <laughs> yeah <laughs> i, I like, mean sure, after getting, you close in a 12 tired. plus second 100 and then run a full extra 200 meters <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's very impressive no matter like no matter what way you look at it that's a that's a good showing and then on the home stretch you come around and our man on the ground mr tom wang yeah. <laughs> Wong tang yeah. who's our He's like uh, one of the highlights of the weekend. Yeah, he's like our super fan number one. It was, uh, it was so good. He was he brought a bag of our beans to the race. And so if you look on our Instagram and you look at the video of George finishing, he's holding the bag of beans on video while George is doing this amazing thing. And then also, I don't know how this played out exactly. You have to explain it to us. But you got an OAC scarf during your last lap, during the victory lap. Sorry. And then you threw it specifically to Tom Wang, and yeah. you just absolutely made his day, made his <laughs> made his year probably. Yeah. Well, the thing I saw, he like was yelling at me like in the the few minutes before the gun goes off. Like they were like, "All right, guys, two or three minutes till till the gun." Like when they show a few extra ads or something, kind of normally comes down to TV time whenever they're going to start the race. So everyone just kind of mills around right on the line, and like and Tom's yelling at me and like holding up the bags. They're so good. And I. I gave him a thumbs up or something. I was like, see my trying to focus, but I was also like, this is dope. That's it's awesome. A bag about being that is hashtag good for the sport. At the race, yeah. And then on the way around, I like get to the on people. Who must have been just going, going mental. They were absolutely they must be going, going mental. It was pretty sweet. Like right on the bin. And Andy Weeding is holding the scarf and just chucks it at me. I, was, I, was like, Man, I don't know, when people get a flag or something. Yeah. Oh. Like, pretty much that. A scarf and I was it like, is what, that. what am I supposed to do with this? And then a few steps later, I look up and like, and Tom's showing me the beans bag. I was like, I right, yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna throw this up there. He he, and perfect throw apparently. I didn't even see if it got to him, but it was amazing. He that night he went out and was like sending us pictures, and he was rocking the scarf and just like. We actually yeah. Facetimed him at dinner. <laughs> yeah, we Facetimed him at the dinner. <laughs> That's amazing. Which is pretty funny. Damn. I think Jordan like got his number on, off Instagram or something. Oh, yeah. That's just so perfect. It's like you couldn't you couldn't write that up. Write the yeah. script for that any better Perfect than that played script. out. And then, so that was the race. Did you get to talk to the other boys after the race? Like, how'd they all find it? Yeah, I think, like, pretty similar reactions. I feel like most of us felt like in in a perfect situation, like a lot of us probably in in 735 shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
yeah, running, going through the mile in 409, 14 just felt maybe a little, a little quick and we didn't quite get on in that second K. Yeah. But I think most people at the front of that race, just based on how we closed, are in shape to run probably a few seconds quicker. Yeah, I would think so. But I mean, but that's, but you go to Milrose to, to race more than, like we could go to Boston on a different weekend and, and it'd be much less entertaining. Yeah. No, well, um, it was certainly entertaining. Yeah. So. But it was cool just being, in, I mean, so many young guys in that race. Like, I think yeah. I was maybe, like, one of the oldest people in the race. Didn't That's they weird. say, like, the average age was 22 yeah. or something like that? the average like age that? of that race was, like, 22. That is extremely which young. Which kind of crazy. And it was, it was kind of sad. Well, we should we should give a shout-out to Morgan Beetlescombe, the collegiate who did yeah, pretty well in that race. Yeah, 743. 743. But it was, it was kind of tough because a couple of the other collegiates didn't do as well because I think... It just wasn't quite the right. It was just so stacked, and there was just so many bodies to get around on an indoor track. So, like you had guys like Wesley Kipto and Charles Hicks, who we know are obviously capable of amazing 3K performances. But it was a tough day for for some yeah. people out there. And unfortunately, Nico decided not to come race. Oh yeah, what was what was uh, that? I think from inside sources, um, I think he was just dealing with a a small injury a few weeks ago, and kind of wasn't doing as much training as he liked mm-hmm. and then had gone to see ball and, and raced that altitude mile and decided he was more in shape to run a mile rather than put himself in a 3k yeah and i think they decided they wanted to run a 3k more as a team that makes sense in a, in a couple of weeks from now more controlled setting of Hamad and drew and yeah probably a little more controlled back in back at seattle probably go get mm-hmm. that natty's qualifier but we ran 356.0 which is no slouch that is pretty quick that's Which I think, I, I'm not sure what we predicted after we ran three. I think we said, I'm pretty sure I listened back to it and it was like, well, unfortunately, we'll never get to see Nico run a sea level mile. <laughs> but and then we'll he went wrong. and ran one like two days later. <laughs> Just He probably listened to that and was like, fuck these guys. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that 3K. I'm going to go show them what I can do. And 356, very, very respectable. So, yeah, that that's awesome. And then, yeah, Ollie isn't here to talk about his victory, but uh, the... The want to make a mile is the most like prestigious event at Milrose Games. Yeah, it's like the hundred and fourteenth. Yeah, it's right? like it's like it's it's been going on forever, and it was a big yeah, matchup between. Have won that race before. Yeah, big matchup between him and Josh Kerr, and obviously Ollie got the dub, which was absolutely huge, and he ran it in classic Ollie form. I will say, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I thought he looked so good through 800. He's, because he, he looks very strong running at the front of a race, but I thought mm-hmm. he looked even stronger than he's looked in the past. And... Yeah, I think very under control. Yeah, he looked good. And then Josh Coe went around and it wasn't even like, it wasn't even like hesitation, like Ollie to stick on him and then to be able to go around him. And... I honestly don't think, based on the splits, that Josh had actually picked it up real at all. No. I think he kind of just went around. Yeah. Maybe for like the mental edge, like... That's See just what he does every race. <laughs> seeing yeah. if Ollie would break. But, yeah. I definitely um, got a little bit nervous when Kerr went around him because, like, you can either stick on that or just fade back a little bit. But yeah. well, normally when Kerr he would, stuck on, it looked yeah. good. Normally Kerr, I think, would go around and then drop a few seconds, which, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think he did this time. And, yeah, I mean... Um, full credit to him making it a race, though. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, it was good. But Ollie, Ollie's the type of guy who... He'll be on his A game like probably like eleven months of the year, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you're yeah. gonna, if you're gonna take him on, like you have to be ready to go because otherwise, he's he's just so consistently so good, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many fifteen hundreds and miles he ran last year, but like every one of them <laughs> were <lot>. good. <laughs> so, and you he, know, what I was thinking, yeah, from his race and my race, like the erraticness of of my race and like unpredictability. And like how calm and collected his race was, and just looking at his splits, like the, I feel like they like go against our personalities a little bit. Yeah, just that's how, funny. <laughs> yeah, how like a little all over the place Ollie is. The man forgot his bikes on the Wait, way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> his, We're the going day to the he was subway. Having, no way. <laughs> the day he was having was ridiculous. <laughs> he like dropped like a million. He was like dropping his phone in the snow. Yeah. Somewhere. Oh no! Maybe he was just super nervous. <laughs> yeah, he he, yeah. he had to run back. We were like Ram- walking oh, to the subway and he station. Fell, he fell on the oh, ground yeah. too. We're, we were going to subway station. <laughs> he he realizes like a few hundred meters away from the hotel, he forgot his bikes. So he's wearing hiking boots. Runs back to the hotel. That is high stress. 
But yeah, apparently, he on his way it. out of the hotel door, like trying to run around the corner, and eats shit immediately. No. <laughs> lands on his ass, gets up, carries on running, and like meets us like before the subway station, just like panting. That is that is such high stress. Eh? Wow, I cannot so imagine having stress. to deal with that. And then, yeah. uh, and you put him on the track, cool, cool as ever. Oh, yeah. So like composed on the track. His, just ran fifty sevens, man. His splits were ridiculous. And this is how different it was. His fastest split of the day was from 300 to 400 meters. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's Fun so fact. interesting. I would not have guessed yeah. that. It was like 13.97 or something. Hmm. And every single other split was between 14 and 15 seconds. There wasn't a yeah. single split over 15 or a single other split under 14 seconds. That is amazingly consistent. Like, ridiculous. Yeah. That's and like, yeah. My splits were anywhere from like around 12, 3 to like 16, something. Like yeah. Just that, all over the place. And that's just how Ollie does it. Now. Yeah. He's like, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's so impressive. He I just, feel like every race you can just expect him to like go out hard and hold it. And then, yeah. And you don't want to take it for granted. Seeing what it takes to run a mile like that is that, yeah, the first lap of the race was the fastest. Yeah. And that's how you run 350, apparently. It's yeah. just so interesting to like. Well, there's a lot Think of different ways like to run a mile. Yeah. Because I'm sure, like, yeah, a lot of other people would. But that's the way to, like, not win do it miles like these days. It that's is. How everyone is just running so hard from yeah. the front. Well, yeah, if you like, have if you're someone not on like. That. Yeah. If you've got Ollie, like, yeah. Yeah. he can do it solo. Yeah. Like, he, he honestly probably can. So it's like, you have to be able to do that. And, yeah, that race got split up pretty quickly, which was almost surprising, I would say, because there was so much talent in that field. Do you want to give a shout out to Kobe Alexander? No, <laughs> Colby. Okay, Col- he's like yeah. Colby. He's like one of my favorite runners. I got to say because watching him at the trials last year and just like following he's him from He's one of those guys who's very easy to support. So easy to support. He he wears that sick black kit now. I think yeah. he's still wearing that. I know great he's wearing mustache, the great mullet. <laughs> yeah, he just he just and he's had like he had a distinct like improvement last year. Like he ran yeah. three thirty three, I think, and now three, he's one three forty nine road mile. Yeah, wow. he's Hidden he's so good. Epic summer, and obviously he's like currently unsponsored, and I think a very successful yeah. unsponsored runner is really easy to support as well. Mm-hmm. So he's just like doing it kind of in his own lane a bit. So, and he races very aggressively as well. Like he does. It's yeah. it's really impressive. It was cool to see, to see him and Craig going with Ollie and Josh. Like at least some people were on it. Yep. Yeah. And and Colby running three fifty two. It is interesting being a He almost a caught Josh, actually, in the replay. Did he really? I think really? Josh kind of pulls up the last 100 or realizes that Ollie's got him. Yeah. And and Colby coming like a freight train. Yeah. But. Yeah. It is interesting now that those 1500s are so predictable. Like, if you're in a race yeah. with Ollie, you probably can guess how it's going to play out. <laughs> But I don't know. Maybe he'll start changing things up. Do you yeah. remember on the podcast last week? I think I, w- I think I was going to say like we were previewing the race, and he tried to act like he yeah. was going to do something different, and we were just like, "Come on, man! We know what you're going to do." Come on, like, man. talking about like whether people would go with the pace or not. And I was like, like "Wait, bro, you're going to go in the pace? Going, <laughs> like, what are you talking about?" Otherwise, <laughs> that was pretty funny. He's like, ah, "I don't know if it'll be like a fast Milrose year or not." Like, Dude, what are you even saying? You're in the race. You know that, right? <laughs> and then in the post show, which I, I saw some clips from, he was talking to Matt Senderwitz, and he was. He was saying how Sancho likes to win tactical races. Did you guys see that? No, I no, actually I didn't I saw see something that. that I think Citrus had posted. Like, he has a clip of Matt Centrowitz defending himself. Or yeah. so. I don't know what Centrowitz <laughs> said in reply. So they were talking about Matt Centrowitz saying he likes tactical races, like slower races, essentially. And it's obviously because he freaking won the Olympics in 350 yeah. <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, but he, the, the way he's like, man, I have the trials record. Like, I, I, I ran 334 and won the US trials and Did I you won really? Yeah, you? this past year. Well, does he didn't win the past year. Oh, Wait. you're right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, when was it then? But he does have it. What he, did they run? Did they, they run, run 335? 35. I forgot that Cole beat him, honestly. Yeah. But <laughs> I guess he said... So he I, does. I mean, I believe that. Yeah, he said it, so I believe I him. I think I've read that one But yet. also, I think like, I've seen 334 a YouTube video. isn't a crazy fast time. It's not. It is in a championship race at the third yeah, 1500 of a... Uh, of the US true. trials yeah and he did also say he has the Milrose record of 350 like Ollie didn't run quicker oh, than wow. he's run at Milrose wow. before so yeah. he that's just, an epic race too yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's one with Willis yeah dude I feel like they had some amazing battles yeah. there yeah. <laughs> but I so say he was pretty much just saying like no I can win races yeah. like in any way yeah so sorry that Fair was like enough. a random aside no <laughs> I think I think a solid addition to Cause the Milrose conversation they though. were saying and this is, this is true that since Centro won 
the Olympics in a slow race in 2016, there hasn't been a slow championship yeah. race since that, which is fair. I feel I mean, like it's, it's the same on the women's side too. Like you just, there's such a high ceiling for some of the women that like, yeah. at least like, you know, look at me and Wayne on the, uh, this weekend. We run slower than like some crazy fast times there are. So like, All right, here's a hot take. <laughs> Does that, does the timing of Sintra winning and races getting fast line up perfectly with the no, super it do- shoe? No, it doesn't. The super oh. shoe lineup? It doesn't because they started running really quick in 2017 Wilds was really quick. It was because... Yeah. Because, so 2017, like... What shoes were they wearing then? Just... V- Did things. they not have... They I weren't super shoes till 2019. Okay. Because there was those... I don't know why okay. I'm like blanking on the names right now, but there's two really good Kenyans, Manangoy, Manangoy. And I think one in 2017, Chariot one in 2019. Yeah, so they, I think they just started running really quick every championship race from 2017, and they did the same thing in 2019, and then this past, like Tokyo was quick because like Stewie made it quick. Oh. So it's just, the cer- there's certain individuals now who are confident that the best way for them to run a yeah. championship race is from the front. Yeah. So that's, I think that's why it's different. Because, yeah, it's just, like, these Kenyans, like, they, in 2017, 20, 2019, they just knew that they could run away with it. Especially if they were kind of working together. Yeah. I don't know if they actually, yeah. like, talked about it beforehand, but, yeah. So, the shoe techno- technology definitely helps, though. Yeah, for sure. I mean... <laughs> I think it even helps yeah. off the track. Because, honestly, I think people get fitter now because they can work out more in super shoes. Yeah. I agree with that. Which allows stronger, like, aerobically fit athletes to run the mile i think there has to be some neuro neuromuscular benefits to be more often be able to run those paces in training yeah which yeah, yeah. but True. previously would have had like that those paces would have had pretty big impact on your body yeah but now you yeah it's just you can get more comfortable at it so yeah yeah that that's that ollie i don't even i didn't really watch the post show post miller show was it cool were you guys in there i, I don't, don't know. know i hopped on yeah i think alicia was running Oh. Yeah, I was, I was out there <laughs> running. Doing fitness. Just doing <laughs> laps of the park. I had yeah. better things to do. <laughs> um, I just think it was a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it's a fun way to, to debrief. There's a lot of excitement. Yeah. Yeah, um, especially because like right after the race is when people want to see what's going on and stuff. Yeah. They had some good beers in there. Some nice. Some like armory themed beers somehow. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Love that. Yeah, I think that, that'd be worth doing at other means for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's Get cool. The coffee club pod on there and in a yeah after yeah. ten relays Take over or something from the citrus mag. It was the, it was real collab <laughs> there for a bit. Yeah, when Ollie and I were both on there. It's I left them. Oh, I didn't leave them any stickers. I handed them all out. <laughs> I was gonna give them some stickers. Yeah, that's <laughs> six. You so hopefully someone got some stickers. Yeah. I handed a big stack out. I love that you did that. We want to do more of that going forwards giving out stickers to everyone because we have these cool stickers but we don't have a great way to distribute them right now <laughs> yeah. i think yeah. soon we will via our website but for now if a if a member of the coffee club gang is at a meet ask them for a sticker and you'll probably get a sticker yeah. <laughs> very true <laughs> but so obviously then you guys go back to the hotel or whatever i imagine and then yeah the whole on crew is there mm, so and actu- actually we didn't even mention this it was always birthday as well yeah. and his was. girlfriend was there so what were like? What was the night like? You guys go to like a fancy restaurant or something? I imagine. Yeah, I went to yeah. a reasonably expensive steakhouse. Nice. Um, and had a cocktail, and did a toast. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't do a toast. Someone did a toast. Beautiful. I had yeah. a steak. Um, yeah, a lovely evening. It was so yeah, dark. Was, we were like downstairs. It was, really, it was like a <laughs> it was classic like dark yeah. steakhouse. I couldn't even see like, my food. Honestly. Love that vibe. <laughs> yeah. Love that vibe. Yeah. No, it was good. That all of the on people came with to dinner and stuff. So it was pretty sweet to have them there. And they were all super excited that we did that and raced in the on shoes. And yeah. yeah. Celebrate, celebrate the good times, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who knows uh, Who knows when, it, when this thing is over? <laughs> who knows what's Gotta make the most of them. <laughs> Gotta make the most of them. Yeah. Wow. What a good Miller's games. And uh, Sage, we didn't talk about her race. She was mm-hmm. also in the mile. And she came sixth or fifth? Something around there. Yeah, yeah 425, 425, which is a great PR. Like, yeah. I mean, she was racing it's some a, that's really fast. American record holder in the yeah. mile, German record holder in the mile, Australian record holder in the mile. She raced without Those fear. were like the three people yeah. in front of her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 
She yeah. must have gone through 800 probably quicker than she's ever gone Well, she before. PR'd in the 1500. Yeah, she ran 406 yeah. for wow. 1500 her last, on route. Her last 109, I think, was hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, she, I mean, she's in a great spot, and yeah. I think she's racing an 800 this upcoming weekend. Yeah, which is going to be really exciting since she crushed a 600-meter time trial. Mm. So Yeah, hopefully it's a good race. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they get on some pace, and then she... Because, yeah. man, when I watched her race that 600 time trial the way that she was able to pick it up the last 100 was yeah very that's impressive good to see because normally like those mm -hmm. types of events like it's pretty common to positive split them a decent amount yeah mm -hmm. and they're just she, like supposed to positive split an 800 yeah. for whatever reason that's how you run <laughs> that's the, the way fastest. to run it <laughs> and she looked very strong so hopefully she carries that over to an eight george you're also racing again mm -hmm. upcoming Back to weekend Staten Island. isn't it crazy that like a week ago it was like yeah, we're training, and now you're like, I'm racing every weekend. Yeah, yeah. in the thick of it. Indoors racing is just season. like that. Like yeah. you just back for redemption on Staten Island. Yeah, after so last year. So you're racing. That was probably, oh yeah. That was a rough oh. weekend last year. I yeah. pretty much. I mean, I should have been on crutches already, but I pretty much left Staten Island on crutches. Damn. So when did you like know that y your back was broken? Like when? When I did you it, know that? It was like Tuesday. Or, well, no, I think it was like Wednesday of that week and the race was on Sunday <laughs> but at that point like we were leaving in like two days and I was like I don't know there wasn't much I could do yeah. I just had to hope it was like somehow a glute strain or something like a SI joint problem but yeah, it, yeah I mean I just couldn't even get out of my bed last year at that meet Yikes. so going back this year gonna run a mile a few people from Milrose Feel the same people, a few new people. People who ran the mile or 3K or both? Mostly people that also ran the mile. Okay. And Colby's running again, Hobbs is running again, Preco's running again. That's a good meet. It's gold label, right? No. It's not? Uh, the meet hmm. is, but the mile isn't for some reason. That's weird. Like the mile isn't in the gold label schedule, whatever that means. That's so weird they do that. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I guess it's world athletic stuff. Not that I'm... It I doesn't think, matter. I don't think I'm super worried about that. Yeah. I'm just try maybe i should be i should just think of it more like ollie and think that my last hundred doesn't actually have to be my fastest <laughs> i don't have to close in 12 3 i can like dude it, it's changing george's it. mo here yeah like I, I i look at certain people like ollie race and it's like kind of like inspirational to be able to like just like race like that and like you're a similar alicia where like yeah you guys are able to just like really like we prefer ride the that grind line. Yeah, yeah you ride that line well well I, I know like i've struggled with that and so i definitely want to do more of that but i don't know if that's our strength though and yeah. with that said like it's like you can't mm. force it it's true and you can definitely i think you can train towards it and work to getting better at it but if i, I can know. close in 12 3 i may as well <laughs> it's not it's not a bad thing that you can do that like, yeah. i'll say that much it's, it's only a good thing so who knows but yeah yeah so you got that race up coming and then yeah if i had to choose a way to run a fast mile like i think i would choose closing hard over just that's it true really hard with like three definitely feels go. better <laughs> it, yeah. it is only like a few right. seconds of pain compared to like four minutes of pain i guess yeah that's why like that's where, <laughs> where i'm like i think people like you and ollie just like don't feel pain i mean obviously yeah, you do something's wrong with us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know you <laughs> but then also like the i mean maybe yeah you said kicking's the hardest part of the race that's just the complete opposite. Yeah. Kicking is the easiest part of the race because then I just stop thinking about it being hard. Yeah, yeah it's, maybe it's I'm just already like so far deep into like the it's, pain it's cave. It's just that. adrenaline <laughs> after that. Like yeah. I, 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 I definitely couldn't feel my legs the last 200. Like I wasn't even huh. thinking about it. Yeah, you guys are just the opposites. Yeah, I'm, I'm much more similar to George. Like yeah. I yeah. understand that a lot more. That's funny. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what's going on with us. Anything else from the New York? Well, yeah. you went to Michigan while so. we were in New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Have well, thoughts on moving to Grand Rapids? Morgan is going on his own adventures here. Very <laughs> exotic. He got to make a trip up to Grand Rapids, Michigan for the weekend because, like, everyone was out of town and I'm still coming back from my injury stuff. And so Al, Cairo, strength guy. I hate calling him a Cairo because it's like he's just like... He's so much more yeah, than that. He he's so much more but, than that. Yeah. And it's like it's, it's, it's such a spectrum of Cairo. I don't know. Yeah. But so I went up to get some more treatment and just work with him a bit more. He's based in Grand Rapids. And... Grand Rapids, pretty sick place actually. Apart from the weather, hmm. it's extremely cold there, and there's a lot of snow Isn't on the like ground. Fourth cloudiest city in America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually did oh, yeah. see the sun one time. That was pretty cool, but I had actually a really good time because yeah. I, I booked an Airbnb and I had two friends come visit, 
and so we just like hung out and then the schedule would be like go for a run at 9 30 and like there's no stress for me running a lot right now it's like just do whatever like i need to it's not like i'm training super hard like my body kind of isn't at that point yet but so i just would go for a run and then jason our guy he loves coffee as we mentioned many times before so every day we would visit like two or three different cafes there and grand rapids has an amazing like new new age like coffee scene there <laughs> like these great cafes and that so we would visit a couple of spots and then we'd go to his office and it's essentially like a man cave type setup he has a garage with like just all the toys in the world for someone who's into like working out like he's got a rock climbing wall all this oh, different wow. stuff so he would just treat me and we do a bunch of exercises and then yeah i'd get dinner and hang out with my friends so it was a good three days and from a injury training standpoint i think it was really helpful to me so productive weekend yeah hopefully i'm not back there too often because that means i'm injured yeah <laughs> if, if i'm there but True. it was it was a great little trip so yeah that's the morgan update back training now legs feel terrible <laughs> from all the training and new exercises i'm doing but um, just do you do exercises all day now huh yeah so i do Basically. like i have like three different sets of exercises which i do space out through the day and it's like pretty cool fun stuff i'll uh, i'll have to put some videos up of it sometimes because it's like it's pretty funny it's like different stuff but how long total would you say that you like do exercises for if you include like my rolling out like lacrosse ball mm -hmm. stretching type stuff i would say it's probably 60 minutes Oh, okay. Day. That's it's not, that's it's not, not that bad. Not, not crazy. Yeah. It's not too bad. But the thing is, a lot of it is, a lot of the exercises are very, after you really focus, because oh. it's like mostly neuromuscular mm -hmm. or like coordination stuff for me. So if you don't do it with like a lot of intention and thought, you're not really getting the benefit out of it. Yeah. But I definitely feel that in general, like doing hip mobility drills and stuff before runs, I can't be on my phone or something because I know I just won't do it right. Yeah. Like I, I was... I was had like my AirPods in and I was like, I actually can't do these drills well with my AirPods in because <laughs> I need to be able to like really focus on them, which is kind of a new thing for me. <laughs> but uh, it is like, there are the, they are the type of drills where you definitely can feel them working a lot and you can see the improvement a lot. And doing drills like that to me is like really fun because yeah. you're, you know, you're seeing that progress. So yeah, I've been enjoying that. Um, anything else to talk about? I feel like that's it. I think that summed it up pretty yeah. well. Yeah, that was a nice little talk. We'll potentially, hopefully, Ollie feels better, and we'll have him give his debrief on the race at some point. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Alicia, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. We'll certainly have you on yeah. many more times in the future. Congratulations to both of you for your amazing performances at Milrose. Thanks. Thanks. Don't want to understate that, Good but times. yeah, thank you very much for everyone for listening. That's uh, episode twenty. Hit the milestone. Um, yeah, see you guys next week. Twenty.